Okay, uh, here's the results of the, uh, of the plywood uh, gussets that I made for the um, skimming disc uh, as to, to help reinforce the vertical. Um, that's what it looks like. Pretty cool shape. Um, so, getting pretty strong, um, but I'm going to make it even stronger. Um, so, uh, so I sanded the, uh, the glue, started out with 60 grit, and then I moved to, uh, 150. Uh, so wood glue does not stick to other wood glue, so you have to sand it pretty well. Um, and so to seal this, I'm going to use uh, two strips of paper. So the one that goes on the bottom it lays down really nicely. Like that. The one on the top does not lay down nicely. It's a different geometry. It wants to uh, wants to bend. So what I'm going to do is uh, the top one. I'm going to cut into three or four different pieces, and then the bottom is going to be one solid piece of paper. And I'm using sheetrock joint tape. Um, it's the same stuff that you use to join two edges of sheetrock. Um, wall board together it's the paper version not the not the uh, fiberglass version i've tried fiberglass and i've compared it with the paper and the paper is actually stronger the paper is actually cheaper which is interesting um, but they're trying to push the fiberglass for some reason because uh they make more money maybe i don't know anyway um i use what i test and i use what works and this stuff works better than the fiberglass, so that's what I use. And, um, all right, so I'll go ahead and uh, glue these on. Uh, I'll show you how that works. All right, so this is what it looks like so far. This is before the paper. Um, So uh, the paper is just going to make it even stronger. It's also going to, um, uh, it's, it's almost like a brace for impact. So the paper is going to be, it, it's going to add shock absorption. So uh, if a big, if this uh, disc slams into a big wave, you know, it, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 knots or whatever, um, it, it, it's going to have a big, powerful impact. And if the wave hits one side rather than the other, then it's going to have a big torquing force. So the paper is just going to help absorb the impact. It's kind of like the way I look at it, uh, adding the paper. Paper is actually wood in, in strip uh, in sheet form. So it's almost like welding um, wood together. Okay, I start with uh, Type Bond 3. I pour it in a big tray. I add a dash of water, about 10%. Uh, right now I'm just going to roll it around with the roller, mixing it up. Um, another thing that's different between uh, epoxy and, and wood glue is wood glue will get lighter, it'll evaporate somewhat. So all this, whatever you, if you use epoxy, it, it, there's no, zero evaporation. So whatever the weight is of the epoxy goes directly on your boat. With this stuff, um, most of the stuff evaporates and it gets lighter. And the cool thing is, the, as the glue dries, it wants to tighten the paper uh, because it, it wants to shrink a little bit. So 
All right, so strip number one, I just stick it in there like this. And then stick this over here like this. All right, I'm gonna check it down and make sure it's fully saturated. If you go like this with your fingers and there it's uh, frictionless and it just slides, then that's the proper amount of glue. If your hand just sticks somewhere, then you have to add more glue. Should be yeah, it's uh, it's not enough at the top here. There we go. Notice I don't have to wear any gloves because this is relatively tox uh, non-toxic. Okay, that's that. Um, let me do the other one. Okay, so um, the other thing that the paper does is if there's any kind of gap or bubble in your joint, uh, it'll seal it and make it totally waterproof. Um, I've actually never had a leak in my boat because I use paper and uh, it makes a beautiful seal. Um, okay, so what I have done here is I've uh, the arrow points to the front of the boat, so that means on this seam, I start in the back and keep adding layers um, as I go forward. And what that's going to do is, uh, it's like scales of a fish. Um, uh, the water's never going to hit the edge. Uh, it's always going to be, it's kind of like putting um, tiles on your roof. You start at the bottom and you, you work your way up towards where the rain is coming down. Uh, so with this, you start in the back and work forward. Um, so uh, add some more glue. Uh, you can you can um, dilute wood glue up to ten percent before it affects the strength. I never dilute more than ten percent. Okay, so now I'm going to take the strip. I'm going to cut it into four pieces or so, maybe five. Let's see here. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try four. Four different pieces. All right, start with number one. Put that here. Okay, strip number two. Yeah, you don't want to get too much either. Uh, there's a there's a fine line between not enough and uh, too much. If it slides out of your hands it, that it's so slippery, then that's too much. Okay, here we go. That's number two. So the cool thing about this is I don't have to wear gloves and uh, it's non-toxic basically. This glue is totally chill. It, it does have some VOCs, but it's not a whole lot. And not enough where I have to like wear a respirator or anything. It's gotten pretty easy. You just kind of just poke on it until it kind of bends in the middle there. That is that. 
The next thing I do is uh, take a, a rag and wipe off any excess. Okay, so this rag was in a bucket and I just basically um, wrung it out. I'm gonna try to fold it up nicely. Um, just, you don't want anything like drippy. You don't want to wipe it all off either. I'm just giving it one swipe basically or two. And that is that. Oh wait, uh, which direction is forward? Okay, this is forward, so I have to start back here. Yeah, so my goal is uh, if I can hang all of my weight off of this while this is like literally clamped to the wall or something, then I think it'll be good for the, for the life of the boat. Okay, here's my rag. Okay, so when this dries, this is going to be really rough because the water in the glue uh, raises the fibers and it's going to feel like sandpaper, which is really good for... Um, uh, sandpaper is something that epoxy will stick to. So um, you can still sand it a little bit, but you don't have to sand it much. And then uh, you can put epoxy on this or you can paint it. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I th the problem, the only problem that I see with the paper is it doesn't become translucent like the fiberglass tape. So if you just, so if you just clear coat this, it, it is a little bit ugly. Um, so what I end up doing is I just, um, I'll paint the top, um, but I won't paint the bottom. The bottom is going to be covered with epoxy and I'll probably put two or three layers on to make it nice and slick. I want it to be really slick, like like, um, like glass on the bottom, basically. Um, but um, yeah, so that's the only disadvantage I see to the paper is it's not as pretty and you do have to, if it's on the top of the boat, you basically do have to paint it uh, to make it disappear, basically. All right, and here is a close-up. Okay, there's one more uh, point that I'd like to make. Um, earlier today, I had my shop doors open and it's currently in the 30s outside. Um, it's not in the 30s now. Uh, I do have a space heater in here, but the temperature is probably around 50. Uh, and sometimes it gets even cooler in here. Sometimes it, it goes lower than that, you know, 45 or something like that. Um, in those uh, temperatures, you're not supposed to be doing um, using epoxy. Um, but, um, but with, with wood glue, you can't, you can, you can use it at those temperatures. Um, so that's another advantage, um, over using epoxy, um, is you can build boats basically all winter long. Oh, um, you don't have to wor wait for spring. Um, so I get a lot done in the winter and then I try to do all my sailing and recreation in the, uh, the spring, summer, and fall. One last shot. All right, signing off.